Thank you all for coming today. Um, my name is Randy Barlow. I work on the Fedora infrastructure team at Red Hat. Uh, I focus a lot on uh, Bodhi, which is our update system. Um, and today, we're going to talk about Python 3's async IO library, which is a pretty neat library. I really like it. Um, uh, just in case uh, you're interested in following along on your own computer, I've got uh, this presentation is on uh, GitLab, so I've got a link here. Um, so feel free to go there and check it out. Um, all the files I'll be, sh I'm basically not using slides, I'm gonna be showing you just code. So all the code I'm showing you is inside there and you can check it out and you know, play with it on your own. And um, I welcome questions during the presentation. So if you feel like you're not understanding something or, or if you think I'm not understanding something, uh, feel free to speak up. Um, All right, so uh, I've been thinking about this presentation for a little while, and one thing I wanted to do was sort of create uh, a demo program that shows off uh, what async IO can do. Um, and uh, so I was trying to think through what kind of like toy programs I could write, and you can do all kinds of things with sleeps and prints and things. Uh, and I decided, uh, or I had a problem actually, my, my phone will not play MP3s right now, and I, don't, I really don't know why. It's an Android phone, if you push play, it doesn't make any sound, it says it's playing, but you don't hear anything, I don't know why. Um, and so I like to listen to RSS, uh, my podcasts on the, when I fly on a plane, and I wanna download all these MP3s, but they won't play. So um, I decided to make my toy program for this talk be, where we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go download uh, my RSS feed. Uh, we're not really gonna do that because of the conference Wi-Fi, uh, so we're gonna fake download it. Um, and then we're, the thing is we need to then convert all the MP3s to a different format so my phone will play them. Um, so um, what I'm gonna show you first is how you might do that in sort of a traditional uh, synchronous code. Um, so I have this script here, pretty straightforward. Um, uh, I'm keeping the links in a file called links.txt. So the first thing we do is we go and just get the links out of the file. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a giant for loop. This might be, maybe, is it better if I make it a little smaller? Is that better? Okay, um, so we're gonna go over each le link, and we're gonna start by downloading the link. Uh, so we're gonna, or we're gonna start by printing that we're downloading the links. Um, and then we're gonna use Python requests and get it, and make sure it was okay. Um, I'm gonna do some uh, path formatting to find out what the file name was so I can uh, write it out to that name of file. Um, gonna print some more things to the screen. Um, and then lastly, uh, I'm going to try to find out the base of the name so I can tell ffmpeg to convert my mp3 to an aug. Um, you can see here that I'm calling subprocess. Um, and then lastly, I'm actually gonna have the, the script play the file so that you can hear it and make sure it works because sometimes, it, sometimes it's weird. Um, and that's it. Um, so we're just looping over the files, downloading them, <coughs> converting them, and then playing them and printing out some status. Um, we feel like we're all pretty familiar with this code, right? Like it's not, not hard to follow. Any questions? Okay, so um, I have a question for you, which is what problems do, we, do you see with this <coughs> approach? It's synchronous, so what is that? Yeah, so you, you have to wait for one download to finish before starting the next one. Uh, what else? Well, even worse, you have to wait for the conversion to finish locally while you can be downloading in your background. Exactly, so you don't just wait to download one to start the next, but you also have to wait to process the one you just downloaded before you start doing the next one. And similarly, you have to also listen to it. <laughs> uh, fortunately, I am only listening to two seconds of it. That's what this dash dash length two does. But still, yeah. Um, any other problems anyone sees? Yeah, say, say it again. Oh, right, okay. So yeah, if you hit an exception, um, uh, in fact, I think we, we're going to raise an exception at one point. So if this happens right here, um, 
uh, as soon as you hit that, um, the whole thing's going to exit. Um, no, we could we could fix that by having something catch that exception. Uh, but this, I was trying not to make it too complicated for the demo. Um, but yeah, anything else? Well, actually, I'm going to listen to it. <laughs> uh, that's true. I think MPV would, I guess it probably would uh, exit with an exit code. Um, and I am doing check call. Um, I actually did have some problems. Oh, I have a problem with MPV that I'll talk about later, but it isn't, it isn't that. I think you're right, though. So yeah, I, don't, I guess I didn't have to listen to things, but I actually did. Yeah. The reason I'm playing it is that I'm going to show a more complex form of this later, and playing it does something funny. Uh, <laughs> um, OK. Well, I don't know of any other problems, any others that you guys can think of? Oh. I'm just going to enable your iPod. Oh, OK. Oh, I didn't know the microphone's not on? <laughs> can you? Oh. Do I sound better now? OK. I didn't realize that it wasn't on. OK. Um, OK, so before we. So I want you to keep that, that downloading thing in the back of your mind. So uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to look at an extremely simple async I.O. program that has nothing to do with that. And then we're going to come back to that problem and make it asynchronous. Um. <coughs> OK. So this is an, a very simple asynchronous program. Um, do I have a pointer? Is this a pointer? Maybe? Oh. Um, OK, so in Python 3.5, you get these new keywords, uh, async and await. Um, it is possible to do things like this in Python 3.4 as well, um, but this syntax is different, and I don't really intend to show that today. But just for your information, it is possible to do things like this in Python 3.4 as well. But the code that I'm showing here requires Python 3.5 or later. Um, so. What we're going to do here is we've got a program or, or we've got a function, an asynchronous function called say. It accepts a word. Um, and it's going to wait for a random amount of time between 0 and 2 and a half seconds. Um, and uh, then we're going to sleep. Uh, then we're going to print that word. Um, and um, I kind of want to explain a little bit about what these keywords are doing here. And, uh, and uh, then we'll show it run. Um, so when you, when you use this async in front of a function definition, what you're doing is you're creating something called a coroutine in Python. Um, and a coroutine is uh, sort of strange. When you run the coroutine, so if I write say parentheses and a word, it doesn't actually run right now. It returns a coroutine. And that coroutine can be handed to something to run later. Um, and you can see us doing that down here. Um, so our main function is going to build a list of tasks um, and this is going to call say with a word for each word and let's make it asynchronous. Um, at this point, we're not executing, we are not executing that function. Um, even though, you know, in traditional Python that looks like I'm calling it. But what I'm really doing is creating a coroutine that's, that we'll call it later. Um, then what I'm going to do down here is ask asyncio to this gather the tasks, that is a way to tell asyncio that you want to run this group of things uh, all at once. Just you know, start it all off. Now, to clarify, um, we're not working in true parallel here. We're just working asynchronously. And the difference is important, because um, we, are still, we still have the gil. We're still in Python. Um, uh, so um, we'll talk more about that in a second. But we're basically telling asyncio to just do them all. That's true, yeah. So this function returns something called a future. Um, um, and a future is a, um, how to describe that? It's uh, sort of a, it's an object that you can await. Uh, and eventually, in the future, it will do something, right? So um, when, we, when we call this line, that's when all the tasks are going to run. Um, um, and then the last part is that we're going to use Async.io has this dot run function, and you can just hand it an asynchronous method. So that's what this line, this line here is just essentially running our main program. And I'll show you how that works. Uh, 
And if you run it every time, if you remember, we were sort of waiting a different amount of time between the sleeps. So if you run it over and over, uh, you'll see them in different orders. And actually, when I was playing with this earlier, I did it in order one time. And oh, there you go. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of fun. I think maybe about 1 in 24 you should expect to be in order. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to do, though, was um, show, put some more print statements in here to sort of show uh, what is happening when. So we get some sense that, to remind you, this is not parallel. Um, when we enter this function uh, and we hit this await, we're actually handing uh, the process control back to Python. Um, and, we're, and in this case, we're calling a sleep. So, so when the sleep happens, Python's like, OK, I'm going to go do something else, because I'm not going to waste, I'm just gonna, not going to just sit here and block. So whenever you hit these awaits, um, Python will go to the next thing in your list of tasks, and it'll run the same. In this case, it'll just hit the next await. And so you're going to hit all four awaits before any of them finish. And then it's just a matter of which one slept longer. We, go, we have that randomness. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to stick some print statements. And you know what's going to be funny is I'm definitely going to forget to put parentheses around the print statement, even though this is a talk about Python 3, because I've been a Python 2 programmer for like, I don't know, 12 or 15 years or something. And I cannot, I cannot get used to that. It's so hard. OK. Um, let's see. Um, let's actually do this. Ah. Word to sleep for live typing in front of people. It's great. OK, so we'll put the word and the wait time. I remember the parentheses. That's good. And then we can, well, we could put a print there, but there already is one. So OK, let's run that. Um, and it's, what's really interesting here is that you can see that those new print statements we put all happen first. Uh, because you, each one of them runs until it hits the await, and then the control goes back to Python, and then Python just runs the next one. The other thing that you might notice is that it's always going to print those four in, in the order we told, right? So we said, let's make it asynchronous. We called it in that order. Uh, and each time, you can see us hitting it in that order, but then it sleeps for different amounts of times. It finishes in a different order. Um, so that's sort of the key there. Are there any questions at this point about anything, anything that doesn't seem clear? Or? That I could explain better. Yeah, the question is, uh, do I have to use the async for the main here? I think you do. Um, I'm not actually 100% sure. Uh, you can clone the repo and try it. Uh, well, I guess we could we could try it right now. Let's try that. Let's do an experiment. I think you do because I think that this I think the run expects a coroutine. Uh, However, due to my unconfidence, we can see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, so if you don't have that, you're going you're to get this exception that. Well, if you remove the await, then I don't think you can, I don't think you can run asyncio.gather without waiting on it. What, what are you suggesting? Oh, I see. So the suggestion is I could um, I could kill main, and do this, uh, do this, yeah. and do this. So that actually seems like it could work. What am I doing? <laughs> okay, that's what happens when you confuse vim's paste with your. Okay, I have a feeling this will work actually. Let's see. Oh my. I suppose, I suppose that the gather does not return exactly what that's expecting. So we're, we're all beyond the limits of my knowledge here. Um, but uh, when, you read, when you read examples online, you do sort of see that first form that I was showing. And of course, I have now exited, so I can't undo and go back to it. So that's fine. Perhaps. Yeah. No, because you can you can await coroutines too. No, it's but, but you cannot run a future. You, you cannot. Run a future. 
future. Yeah, you cannot run a future, yeah, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is so. This is actually highlighting some really fun things about all this. Is that it? It is like a really weird, different world, and you, as you go, you kind of run into a lot of problems like this. Um, it actually took me a long time of trying things, and you sometimes end up realizing that you're awaiting the wrong thing than what you think you're awaiting, and then your program doesn't run, or you end up with deadlocks. Uh, so um, it's um, a lot of times it's just kind of experimental, like we were doing here. Like you just try things and try to learn that way. Um, uh, does that mean five minutes left? Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. I feel like okay. Well, let's um, let's move on because uh, with only five minutes left. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is a simple form of that. Uh, remember the problem where we're going to download the, my MP3s and try to turn them into OGs. So I wanted to show you a simple form of that that uses imports that aren't used in the file. Uh, so you can ignore most of those. Um, if you remember, we start off by reading our links. This is exactly the same. Um, I'm going to introduce this new function called download MP3. Um, it uses one non-standard library, uh, fun um, or uses a uh, library that's uh, third party called um, AIO HTTP. Uh, it's sort of like request, except that it's asynchronous. And you can see I'm creating a session here with it. Um, um, I wonder, is it better if I make it a little smaller so you can see more code? Is that still readable? No. Yeah, OK. Um, so we have this download MP3, and then we have our main, which this time I'm not going to try to change. Uh, and the main looks just like that last thing we saw, right? We're creating some tasks with our links, um, our coroutines, and then we're going to ask it asyncio.gather, which basically just says, kick them all off, do it. Um, so let's focus on the um, download MP3 function. Um, it's pretty similar to our first code at the beginning, so we're trying to find out what file name it's going to be called. Um, this AIO HTTP, like I said, is a lot like Python requests. Uh, it is not identical, actually, so it's, you, it's not a drop and replacement. Uh, there, uh, I can't remember, I, I think I hit, um, oh, I think one really weird difference was this one has response.read to get the bytes, but the other one is response.content. So you can't just drop it in, uh, but it is kind of a similar idea. It's a nice library. Um, so we're going to build a session, and then we're going to, and notice that we do that asynchronously. So even creating our s session is asynchronous. Um, and here we're going to ask it to get, uh, um, and I think all that really does is start the connection. Um, and next we're going to print that we're downloading it. Um, and then we're going to open our file, and then we're going to do this. And this is the line that it's going to wait on. So like as you download the file, it's going to hit that line, and it's going to sit for a long time while you download these files. And they're 9 to 100 megabytes each, so we can't really do that on the Wi-Fi. Um, and then lastly, uh, it just prints out some statuses saying that it saved it and so forth. Um, any questions about this before I bring in some more compli complication to it? Oh, okay. What, what does a sync with do? Um, so we all, we're all pretty familiar with the with statement. Um, this is a way to, so this, so this is an asynchronous function when we're creating the session. Um, but we, you know, we often use the with statement to clean up things when you're done. Um, so this is a way to sort of like combine the concepts of being asynchronous and also having a, a way to sort of automatically clean up when you're done. Um, and so, you know, we want to clean up the session and we want to, we want to clean up the call to get. Because when you're, you know, later all we do is ask it for the read, but that doesn't mean it has closed the connection. So I think this sort of ensures that we like close our connection and then close the session as well. Why does the uh, client session asynchronous? Is it, like, what is it doing the client session apart from taking up from the current state? Yeah, the question is what is the client session doing and why is it asynchronous? I don't know. Uh, that um, that may be that may be a detail with how AIO HTTP works. Um, I looked at their docs for only 
a couple of minutes to write this, and then uh, and then it worked, and then I was like, their, their docs you know sort of showed this way. So, frank, to be honest, I don't actually know how they're doing it internally or, or why they want to do it this way. Um, I could only really guess. Yeah, yeah. Presumably, there's something about creating a session that takes some time or can be done in the background. Um, Maybe it accepts some parameters for name recognition or something. Yeah, um, I would probably recommend. Re Maybe their docs explain this. Uh, I really didn't read their docs uh, because Jeremy doesn't like Jeremy Klein doesn't like when you read docs. Uh, I didn't want to disappoint him. He's always on my case about not reading the docs. Yes. Yes. So, uh, to summarize, uh, it, it seems that it's it's you know we're handing control back to this to Python while some kind of creation happens here, some kind of initialization. And when all that's done, it's going to come back to us, and then we can proceed. Jeremy. I have a theory about why it's this way, which is when you call this function, it runs through the entire function and returns, and what it returns is the future. So if you use the, the regular width and then did something asynchronous inside of that, the width would exit before the future event had been completed. Uh, so like you're downloading something, that file hasn't even been opened yet. Right. So you have to say, return a future, and then it changes a bunch of callbacks with the final one being closed after. Right. Yeah, so to summarize Jeremy Klein's comment, the um, if we didn't have asynchronous here and we did it with, we could run through this whole thing uh, because there's a uh, we run through the whole thing before we even download any file, so this is sort of a way to help help us wait and sort of chain the things, including the cleanup. Um, you had a thought? I actually, I just know the, why there is. I don't know why, why this uh, this uh, particular uh, particular function is used with async grid, but I know the difference between async grid and normal grid because I think in this case there could be even use normal normal bit bit coroutine. But the async bit uh, works that way that uh, uh, when you have uh, context manager, you have basically two special methods. One is uh, enter and one is exit. Mm -hmm. uh, enter is uh, evaluated in, in the start of the context and exit after the context, even if there was except, exception raised. But uh, you cannot use normally you cannot use coroutine there. And uh, the async bit was created that uh, you could use uh, coroutines as uh, enter as an Okay. Uh, to summarize, the comment is that it, it, the async width allows you to have an enter and exit uh, for your context manager be uh, asynchronous, um, and so it's a way it's a way to have it schedule the enter and exit on your context manager. Uh, I may be out of time. Okay. Yeah. If people want to go to another session, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I, uh, if you're interested, I encourage you to look at my code because I actually had a lot more. Um, the next code was that it actually processes the MP3 and then it actually plays it, and it actually also limits how many can go at once. Uh, and uh, apparently, it's way too much to do in 30 minutes. So, thank you all for attending. Um, and if you want to look online, I've got some more code than this, um, and you can play with it and try it out yourself. So, yeah, thank you.